Let's show you what we're going to be doing tonight. Let me just uh, key this up here. And here I can uh, bring up the reference image, which you can see, but let's see here. Can we do it? Yeah. Yeah, turn on that. There we go. And that is the reference image what we're going to be working on. And something I sketched up earlier today. You know, I may be able to do a quick switch over. And I can show you how I kind of came up with this based off one of the sideshow. This is actually based off sideshow collectibles sculpture. And they had one with, you know, this, this horn set. And then his mouth closed. You know, still looking angry. Um, and then they had one with big gnarly horns in the mouth, mouth open. And so I liked the mouth open on the other one, and I liked the smaller horns. So I merged them together in Photoshop. And then I went in. And I'm going to go into here. I'm going to pull up the video. One second, guys. So, oh, I don't have it. I thought I had. I should have prepared for this one a little better, and I didn't. And then, if I don't have this, and I'm just not going to do it. Check this out. So this is so this is a sketch. This is over my iPad, and this is kind of how I came up with it. Just gonna go to here and hit play, and you can see basically what I did here. Went from the photo, and I was trying a few things, and I was thinking maybe I'll make it a full skull with just the horns. Then I'm like, nah, I wanted to keep the the eyes and the kind of frow, you know, the eyebrows. So I just went with the, basically the lower jaw, some of it, and the nose as a skull. And then I started doing some tweaks and just a couple of little ideas and some shading and just to get a basic idea of what I'm doing. This is just done in Procreate. I tried a few things. This is going to be on a red panel. And that's basically it. Took that fast. <laughs> that was really it. All right, so. Cool. All right, let's see what else. Love Procreate, time-lapse feature. Yeah, it's really cool. It makes things a lot easier. Um, yeah, Gerald, there's no green in this tonight. Gerald will be super safe this evening. Um, so let's talk about the panel here, what I did really quick. So when you look at the panel, it, it's this is uh, Createx Autoborn Sealer Red. And then what I did after it dried, I sprayed a little bit of um, Lavalley's Grunge Effects, which you can't spray over Createx colors normally on the auto on the on the um, Autoborn Sealer. You can, but you can't still can't wipe it. So what I did is I sprayed it, and then I missed it a little bit of weak blackish red around the edges, and I just let it all dry, let it dry out completely, and then I could wipe it off. And then I just went back in with the red center and just kind of made the glow. Uh, back up and then I did our image transfer you can't see it here but I did what I've done in most videos I took the back of the drawing and I put charcoal on the back with like soft lead pencil and then basically made a transfer from there and we cut it out so I'm gonna be using some of a couple of the new createx colors again uh, we're definitely gonna be using um, what was that color called 
Definitely going to be used the, the, the Titan buff, which is that buffering white, so you don't get that blue. You know, you don't get that. Um, man, my words tonight are horrible. Um, you don't get that blue cast, a blue shift, okay, with this, which is nice. So, but we're not going to use this pure for really much, but I'll talk about that. And a color that just came out, which is really cool, which was the Berlin Airbrush Bordeaux, I believe is what it says. It's kind of like a dark, almost a wine color. Um, but I thought it'd be really good for the shading against the red here. So I'm not using just black to shade. Because as you know, when I do my black shade, a lot of times I add a purple to it. But I figured this would be a nice kind of shader color and background color that won't kill it really quick. Um... So, hey, Blue. Kelly Blue saying hi. Hi. Uh, had the Procreate trial. Thought the price was 20 bucks, but it looks like it went for 60 Procreate's free, I thought. Procreate? No, Procreate's not free. Oh. It's uh. like, it's so few. It's, I forget how much it is. I think it's like $19 or something. Yeah, I don't know. It's, for what it does, it's worth every penny. Um, so, if you look at this color here. It's kind of like I said, it's got a, almost a wine cast to it. It looks a little bit more purpley on my camera, but. Um, $9.99. What was that? $9.99. Yeah, Procreate's $9.99. But it's not like a subscription basin. You yeah. can buy it Buy it once, yeah. So, in this, I'll probably add a little bit of black as I go, uh, a little bit of illustration black, just so it darkens up. But what I'm really going to do to start is I just want to get some delineation, and I'll put that drop shadow in. But see how that's just, it's not killing it. It's just a really nice color. And I'm getting that separation without killing it with black. If you use blue, too, too much black right now, it would, you know, really kill it. So I'm just going to do a fine mist around. That's going to semi-darken this whole background. It, this is the first time using this color. I think this is one of Marcus's colors that Marcus developed. Yeah, I want to shut the reference image off, but now we don't need it. Yeah. So I'm just going to blend this out, and that's just going to darken this red. See how easy, how easy that did it without killing it? Oh, that's not turkey. I can't turn it off. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to get this nice drop shadow in here. And that's just going to give me that separation. Yeah, that's a great color off the red, even though it's got you know, that like magenta like wine color, but it just really gives it that nice delineation and leaves all this in here. Um, the other color I'm using and is going to be this color here, which this looks like. I wish I had like a something black I could spray this on, but I don't. Um, basically, this is the color here. Let me uh, switch to my overhead cam. That's the color I'm using. This, believe it or not, is going to be most of the highlight color. Okay? Because when you look at the actual reference of him, and I sometimes I go into Photoshop and use a color picker, but you see the stuff here? That ain't white. This is all gray tones, gray purplish tones. And this white, these white highlights here on the red, realistically, is this color here. Okay, and that's where a lot of people, when you're starting out, you could actually go a little more orangey than this too, uh, or a little peachy would work. So, uh, yeah, Clip Studio is 60 bucks a year, and it's good, but it's a little too heavyweight for this. What I like about Procreate is Procreate just works. It's just simple, it's clean, it's easy, it does a lot. Um, you know, I have full Photoshop and all that stuff, and I still use Procreate for most of my stuff. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I just want to get a little bit, I want to get his cheek out a little bit here, just so when I go in later, I have some separation here as well. And it doesn't look like I'm spraying much, but it's just enough to get that edge. And I'll probably, I might actually lighten this up a little bit then the other area, because I know there's some texture, is this is um, Drew Blair's Micro Dots. 
I'm gonna use this in here. And I'm actually gonna put some of that skin texture in that area now. Just because I know that's gonna be the, the brightest area later. It looks really pink on screen, but but it's not. The other color I'm going to do is I'm going to use this buff color. Basically, put these on here. So I gotta really line this up good. I want, to, I want to get the horns, the eyes. Basically, I want to get that all kind of loosely registered in. So the yellow has something to go off of. Eye locations in, and I just shifted that a hair. And the teeth are going to come down. Oops. Yeah, I shifted a little bit. I have to do a little correcting on that later. That's fine. that you know that buff color so see it just kind of that know, looks creepy as hell <laughs> the next color I'm gonna use is basically it's a yellow ochre and I'm just gonna tint these this color doesn't cover over the red that's why I put the buff down first this will kind of get that yellowy cast to the horns and the teeth and the eyes. And just to kind of get that started. Now I'll have some areas to play with the browns and blacks and things like that. Off of. Cool. Hello, hey Zeus, how you doing? Darth Maul's been on my paint list forever. So you never get to the point. Yeah, yeah, that's. I've been wanting to paint one for a while too, and then after seeing Steve Leahy's last week, I had to. I had to step up and do one. Um, you know, honestly, yeah, I did this pretty quick. Um, meaning on this one because I did all the stuff ahead of time because I really wanted. There was quite a bit of cutting, as you can tell, and set up on this, but they didn't want it, that to be the majority of what everyone had to watch, is the cutting side of it. But really, I just did it to get everything in here established. And baselined in. And then, and pretty much after this stencil, really just freehand everything. Well, I need to get this one taped down because if it moves, it's going to be a nightmare. <clears throat> Let's see, it's going to move still. So it's going to get this into position. There's that. Needs a little tilt.
And again, I'm still going to use that blush, that um, Bordeaux color, the Berlin Airbrush Bordeaux, because I just want to register this in. I don't want to be like, like already go to black and be like, you know, crazy face paint. Um, I'm going to have to redo those eyes. But by doing this, then I'm going to be allowed to carve in that kind of detail. Because it's not, you know, remember, on this character, on Darth Maul, it's not um, face paint. It's, you know, actually carved into his skin. It's part of his, his markings. Um, so I want to be able to add different layers to it and make it look kind of bump, bumped out and kind of bump mapped a little bit and things like that. So by working it from this color to the dark. It's gonna have a much cooler look to it, in my opinion. And here, I mean, really the whole jaw goes black um, based on the image. But so I didn't, I couldn't cut it out, so I'm just gonna transition blend that out a little bit. Now that's gonna give me, you know, all the basics, you know. So now it's, um, you know, it's all really there to freehand around it. So, you know, I didn't want to overdo it with stencils and masks and things like that. Um, but see, by doing this now, I can go in, you know, we can start carving detail. And I'll probably darken this color up. It gets much, much easier. Uh, I got to get the nose registered in and the eyes and stuff, but the cool thing is now is I can highlight some of this stuff and just kind of bridge everything and get it to a point where I can just play. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Next thing I want to do. <clears throat> can you give me that blade, Gilly? <clears throat> So I'm just going to cut the, the nose out. And then I'll be able to kind of talk a little more once we get past this to see who's in the house. Hope some of the Facebook people make it over. Just for some reason, like the webcam I normally use for Facebook Facebook isn't seen, it's only seen like the one on my MacBook. So I must have changed permissions or something. And now I gotta go back in and like reauthorize it. And I didn't have time for that right before the feed. And the YouTube feed's been the better feed anyway. So they can make it over here. Yeah, you know, I thought about having a lightsaber glow through here and then having the face lit. Um, and that would be really cool for a much more involved piece that I have more than two hours to do. Um, but on here, it's, you know, and maybe it's something I'll add to it, but, you know, or do a different painting. Because I, I did want to add kind of a lightsaber glow, but it brings in all sorts of <clears throat> other parameters that, I really didn't want to get into, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. So what I'm going to do is, how oh, this color, I said it's kind of too, a little too pinky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to orange it up a little bit and kind of get it to a little bit more of a peach tone. Is 
not have Cheez-Its tonight. No, no Cheez-Its tonight. I'm not, not going to hear her crunching away in the background. I have soda. So she has soda. So yeah, so make this a little bit peacher, peachier. And we'll use this for a lot of it. Oh, the other thing I got to be concerned about tonight, just so you know, and I am putting a record on here, um, there is a windstorm or a thunderstorm coming into the area soon. I think after nine. So, if we happen to lose anything, we'll, uh, we'll get back with you. Oh, so that's Kaylee typing. Yeah. Okay, so this color. So on a on a piece of white, you can see it's kind of that peachy flesh tone color. You would never want to use it for flesh tone because it'd be too orangey. But for this, I think that's going to give us a really nice. Wrinkles here. And I can go in, I can hit before I go too dark. I can go in and just hit some of these indents. This is probably going to be one of the most color heavy pieces I've done in the feed. Let's see, I can hit these now, kind of where they've doubled in. And when I go to black, I can kind of carve them back out so they won't be as, as bright. But it'll just kind of help profile these edges and make them look... ...indented. You know, just like when you're doing like beveled edges on like metal blades and stuff, you got you have to have a highlight side and a and the shadow side. So I'm doing that same thing here and just kind of working it in at the beginning. And it's okay if it's a little dynamic now because It'll get cut into the background later. Let's see if I can darken up this camera. Here, I'm making a little wobbly for a second. I think I got too much, too much light coming in it. That's a little better. It's not as, not as pinky. <clears throat> So 
supposed to be black out of this horn too. I'll do that in a sec. I even save these pieces so you can actually go in and shade around it just a little bit and warm it up. See that? So is there another piece of it like under See? there? Under the black? Under that. Is there a large piece? Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. <coughs> This guy here. Now I can get this nice little edge glow here. And it just really starts to wake it up. <clears throat> A lot of red and yellow going on in here, so we're just kind of he's got some texture in his eyes and just get that in there now. Little wrinkles coming in here. And a lot of this will get toned back in after. I'm just kind of putting it in there. I know where it is. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so Carl asked a great question. And any reason I want hand cut? Yeah, because this is a portrait realistically. And there aren't really any hard edges. Especially in this map. I didn't. I was on the fence. I almost vectored it. And you could. But if you remember when I did the tattoo skull piece, you get the same effect, but one's a little softer. D by using the paper, and it's the same process, really, it allows me to get a lot more softer edges and things like that, which is kind of what I wanted. Um, yeah, that's basically the reason why I did it like this. Um, my white never comes out good freehand. It runs off the canvas. Yeah, you, whites, you got to play with. So... Um, you can get it there, then you got to really drop your pressure down. The one thing, and I did this when I was starting out, um, whenever I watch videos, you know, I'm hearing the sound of this airbrush, and it sounds like they're, they're like, you know, at like 50 PSI, and some painters are. Um, you really got to find that kind of sweet spot pressure. For your stuff. And, you know, this, I've never painted Dark Ball, even a little bit. So this is a first for me, so nothing but net and doing it with you guys live, and we'll see, we'll see how it comes out. I got this kind of skull opened up mouth here. So I'm just going to kind of highlight some of that stuff now. Warlock's in the house. Let's go, man.
Those are joining the late. Yeah, sorry, I missed last week. I'm doing a lot of um, tax prep. All that fun stuff this time of year that we all get to do. And just and that with a lot of bikes and a lot of work in the house. I just couldn't couldn't put anything together. Yeah, man, give me a buzz, Marshall. Um, just get your wallet ready. Ask, ask Steve. Steve just took the plunge. Kaylee, Steve just got an atom and was getting ready to start doing a multicam feed. And... Oh, oh. Children's dance recitals. Been a long two weeks. Oh yeah, I remember those. Oh. Uh, Kaylee did those. Every Father's Day. And they always did it on Father's Day because what, so what, what do dads want to do most? They want to be with their daughters on Father's Day. That was the excuse to say, well, you know it's bike week up here as well. And it's Father's Day, so you actually do it. Yeah, it was... I had strong feelings on it. <laughs> I'm kind of digging that. That's looking kind of cool. Yep. Every once in a while, I just can't make the feed. I try to, usually I try to like, make it up, but just, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the New England area, the Northeast, our riding season is obviously very short. So it's basically people start riding really mid, late April, but it really goes from May till like September. But you know, the prime time is always obviously, you know, June, July, August. Um, so, and everyone puts their bikes away for the winter. So what happens is, you know, most of my customers get their bikes into me pretty early in the season. So I have them most of the winter to get work done. And inevitably a lot comes down to, you know, oh, I need it for, for early spring. And it's already, you know, mid February and yeah, most guys, I, I don't accommodate that, but I have a lot of shops I deal with that, you know, need it that I take care of. And so this time of year just gets incredibly busy up here in the Northeast. So we're just, you know, once people get a warm day, they all start calling, how's my bike, how's my bike? So I get a lot of those calls and just trying to get everyone, everyone out the door in that timely fashion. Yeah, they definitely want to sit four hours every day leading up and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do the same thing when Kaylee was in horse shows. It's a lot of sitting at the barn and watching her ride and, and now she's doing volleyball and um, there's a lot of time. But dance recite all fucking kill me. <laughs> but Kaylee was so graceful. No, I was <laughs> If you couldn't hear, she said she was a baby giraffe. She was a little bit of one. She was you weren't that bad. Oh, Chris Rock? I don't follow that first term. Oh, the was... The only thing would have made that better is Chris Tucker coming out from backstage going, You got knocked up! I'm out! <laughs> that would have been awesome. Can I get this? 
It's always fun trying to get these cameras to match up, right? And zoom that in a little more. Yeah, it comes out a lot pinker on this one than, than the other one. But you can see how building that, and it's definitely not this magenta, it's really deep, deep red. It's closer to this, but it's even darker um, in person. But reds are so damn hard to get right on camera. So. Cool. just enough to set it so you know I almost just did this all monochromatic black and then I'm like nah let's see how far I can push it so I mentioned the Kaling he was like no you can do it all so so if I mess up we will just blame her yeah don't uh. don't blame someone can't blame myself just had my exacto knife and now it's gone. Oh. Okay, I think it fell right there on the floor. If you could come grab it. That is Let it. Okay. Well, let's break up. Oh, I got one. I got one. Sorry, I just needed it for that this little bit. This little bit. This is a great color. I really like this this color. it as I go. Yeah, candy black would work too. So I'm using a really weak illustration black with red. Um, but you know, this that this Bordeaux color actually really does that kind of same trick. Now, the only reason I want to avoid the red candy, if I can, is um, because I'm not going to be going over. I don't want to have to do bleed check or anything like that and go back in with white and have that pink happen. So, um, for this illustration colors will be really good. So now I'm going to go in around this eye and I can start carving all the detail and this way I can really show that eyebrow ridge by not like overdoing it yeah you know, I can slowly start bringing up that texture So that's always been the issue with, with when you're on something you're doing black on black and trying to get shading. So the key is if you go, you know, you go too far too much, now you lose your ability to kind of push pull that detail. So it's really about um, really getting that soft kind of shading in here.
I'd rather it take me four or five passes to get to the right tone than do it too early and then have to try to cut back in. You know, this would be a good thing if you paint in Red Skull, which is kind of <laughs> this is kind of like a mix of Red Skull and uh, Dark Maul. Yeah. <laughs> um, it'd be a similar painting technique. I actually met Ray Park um, right after the Phantom Menace came out. We were doing, me and my friend Tim were doing a show in Jersey called The Chiller Show, which was like a monster horror movie and model festival down in Secaucus, New Jersey. And uh, he was there signing. Thank you, Simon. But don't forget to like and subscribe and tell all your buddies and I gotta get this page growing. I don't have all the details yet. I gotta figure out the best way to do it um, and how to get everyone registered in. I am gonna plan a painting giveaway when I hit 10,000 subscribers. I just need to figure out the logistics of how to do it, the best way to do it, so. But see how by doing that soft, how just, you know, quickly it builds in. If I can zoom in more. You know, and now, so again, it looks kind of pinky rosy here. But if you look at the left cam, you know, the, the, sh the shot over here, you can definitely see it's a lot blacker. In person, it's it's almost like, you know, almost black. So it's really, really cool to just kind of see the difference on camera versus reality. But by building this slow, it leaves me that opportunity to keep adding more. Great drawing. What do we got here? Thanks, Blue. Let's see. TV guy, this is Travis. Yeah, yeah, Ray Park was great. So I use some, yeah, I use solvents all the time. So I, I use a mix of both. So my illustrations and stuff are all done with Createx. Um, I'd say 50-50 or, you know, are on the motorcycles are done Createx and some are done uh, house color. So I, I mix back and forth.
Yeah, no, there's a way to do it through Facebook and pick people who comment and when they sign up, things like that. Um, so I got to look into the, the, the right way to do it. So the giveaway, you know, A is done legit and, uh, you know, does what I want it to do. done. Move down here and I can start carving a lot of this stuff out. Like anything, when I clear this one, this thing's going to pop like crazy. Any advice for controlling overspray on textured surface canvas? Yeah, you kind of lower pressure as much as possible, and you got to keep the airbrush really straight on when you're on a, on a really nap surface. Um, you know, or you just embrace the texture, man. That's part of working on canvas and textured surfaces is to embrace that texture um, and use it. You know, and let that texture be it. If you don't want that texture on a canvas, especially then your best bet is to, um, you know, gesso it a couple times and then kind of seal it up and then say it, you know, kind of say on that flat will help. There we go. I need, I need paper to write down. There's a piece of paper right in front of you. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's why I left it there for you. Thank you for that, sir. Appreciate you dropping the hammer on that and getting it going. I got I got your panel just about buffed and ready to go. I got everyone's panels. Honestly, everyone's panels sitting on my bench in the shop. Three quarters buffed and ready to, to finish up. I just got to get it done. So thank you for all your patience. I buffed them once and I wasn't really happy with them, so I sanded them all back down and give them a second round because I really wanted to get them nice and nice and shiny. Yeah. So you know, um, Nikki. Yeah. So. I could have used, if you don't have more brush control, then you kind of go back in and rely on the stencils more, you know, to, to sharpen things out. Like I come back in and just, you know, do this more, but you get a really super crisp edge. And if you look at the reference, it's not as crisp. So you kind of, you know, you can approach it with more, less free hand if you want to. Um, 
but yeah, free hand control is obviously going to be, you know, the key to, not the key to success, but once you have your free hand control down, then you can choose when it benefits you the most, when you want to use it, when you don't, you know, you get to choose more often, you know, how you use it. And it just saves you a lot of time because you're not trying to cut stencils for everything you need to do. And you do more freehand. Um, it's a much more freeing way to paint. If you have a, like seen or taken Steve Gibson's class, his is completely freehand. There's no, not even a stencil, not even a, you usually don't even, you know, project or trace anything or even pre-draw it in a lot of his classes. It's just full on start sketching with the with the um, with the airbrush and then just keep going. I mean there is it does it does add length to the process. Um, so you know the nice thing about being able to have total free hand control is you can choose how much time you want to spend on it for that client. You know, if you're doing just a painting for yourself, you can do it all or a little bit. You know, you just have more options. This one's coming out fun. Mixing colors on the fly. Honestly, I learned a lot of that from the t-shirt days, man. You know, and applying colors down and then coloring over that with, you know, a semi-transparent to get the color I wanted. Because, when I, man, when I painted back in the day, and I sound really old when I say back in the day, but it was, you know, early 90s, and, um, you know, the mall t-shirt racks, we did, like, nine, we did 12 colors, 13 colors. We didn't do a full, like, 30-color rack. So if I wanted lime green, I put yellow down and then put, you know, misted green on top of it and got lime green. You know, if we wanted flesh tone, we layered brown softly and just kind of toned it as we went. You know, we didn't have every color. We just had what we had, and you just work with, with what you got. So I learned a lot about how to um, get the color you want by just layering colors over each other. Yeah, thanks. It's, it's coming along fast, but it's one of those... You know, you'll get to certain pieces that are fast, and then some of it will really take your time. Um, The Carney's here. What's going on, man? You haven't been in a while. And I'm going to come in these horns with some browns and stuff and work it from there. Mm -hmm. 
I'm actually going to bring this back up. looking cool so how much did you pay for that surface you're painting on oh this um oh, what was the price on this i want to say it was like 150 175 dollars for this section that's really not bad um and that's how it is so that's that's the rack that's the metal uh, this is the thing i added that was a f yeah it wasn't too much extra for this i think it was like another 30 bucks or something like that um yeah, it's really reasonable. This especially. I think blue. Did you just recently buy one of these? Do you remember how much this section was? Like the actual easel piece. It wasn't bad from what I remember. Yeah. So I actually I did add some black to it. So it it would get this almost as dark, but I added I added like five percent black. Yeah, Simon. I want to say it's one seven one, between one fifty one seventy five um, for this setup. But the nice thing is the, the steel is great for magnet. It's powder coated really well. So every week, I just after this I use some isopropyl alcohol, and this all comes right off. You get know, all the overspray. And the nice thing is, it's positionable. It's super sturdy. Um, everything else just, you know, uh, docks around it. You know, all this other stuff here, that's all different. That's all other attachments. And the rack, the rail here is all, like I put Vision Air. But the nice thing is, the system's modular. You can just build it, you know, as you go, as you can afford pieces. You know, it definitely. It solves a lot of problems whenever you're trying to, like, you know, paint. And then you can you know, you always add new features and things. You know, which, you know, it's just really cool because it... Usually it's a solution that we've been looking for. And he's also really good about, you know, if he doesn't have something... And you have a need, you message him, and okay, he's good at figuring out ways to make it work. So I know, um, like when they wanted the people who asked about RC car stuff, uh, Steve Buckus and Michelle were doing it, and within like a week, he came up with a, one of the best ways I've ever seen to mount RC car bodies to. You know, so definitely um, just really, really good. I want to get this back here really crisp. So it's really dark back here. Yeah. And I've always wanted to do a skull one. I don't know if you follow him on um, all the dark metal, uh, the metal panel. These are just, these are side blanks. So these are um, Alumacore. You know, it's aluminum composite panels. Um, they're pretty cheap. I buy them, I actually buy 4x8 sheets from my local sign supply company, like a sign supplier. And I pay 90 bucks for a 4x8 sheet. And I have them cut down to um, 
like 18 by 24 panel. So I get like, I don't know, 15 or 20 of them, whatever. And then from there, I can just you score them with a razor blade and snap them to whatever shape you want. Remember, there are still we are taking bids on this. London pen is at two hundred. Yep, uh, yeah, 6x12, 6 by 12, 6 95 each, price goes up depending on the size. Yeah, and the other thing, you know, is just the shipping. But I like these better than the traditional metal panels, the all metal, because these are very thin metal front and back, and it's a PVC like composite core. Um, which makes them actually lighter than like an 040 panel would weigh a little bit more than this and it would dent easy. These don't dent very easy at all. They're lighter as ship. Um, and I love painting on them. They're just, they're, they're great. I'm gonna get these, get this kind of his face markings done as black. I'm gonna go back to that Bordeaux color by itself for the shading because this is. I don't want to get this dark this fast everywhere else. Yeah, I like working on them as well. Yeah, so like, you know, on the 040, 040 pin, as you touch the corners, man, and they just bend. Um, these, you know, take a beating. And they actually bend back kind of easier <laughs> than the metal ones. But, um, yeah, they're just nicer to work on. They feel more substantial, and for artist-wise, they frame a lot easier uh, as well. the rest of the markings. Good here, good here. Cool. Thank you, Gary. All my patient customers waiting for the panels. You're going to get a whole, like, you're going to have to do an art show, Gary, when you get all these panels. But I've been slacking on finishing, polishing, and shipping these things out. Tore my 
think that's good there. <clears throat> So these are, they're about an eighth inch thick, but it's mostly PVC. It's mostly, um, you know, it's mostly the, the, the composite plastic core. The metal's pretty thin on each side of it, but it's thick enough where, you know, you can sand it really good and you can get it down to bare metal without like ripping through it. Um, but they're about a quarter, they're about an eighth inch thick. Yeah, those mini, oh, who has the mini hoods? Um, I was talking with someone the other day that makes them. Ah, oh, because we were talking about the mini gas tanks that Troll used to make, and he makes the tanks. I, I forget who he is. If anyone remembers who makes the mini hoods, if Michelle was here, Michelle would know. So this painting right here I cut down to, this is eight and a half by 14. So it's almost like a legal sheet of paper. I wanted something a little bit longer than what I've been working on. when they were four inches tall. Oh yeah. Yep, those always take some work. You know supply in the UK for what? The, the hoods? I think Dave used to have them. Uh, he may still have them, actually. All right, so now I'm going back to that straight Bordeaux so I can actually start shading a little bit more of everything before it gets too dark. So I want to really I want to push that color without going too I don't want to push it back too far. Kind of got some wrinkles across the head here. We'll put that in. See that little bit I just did? You know, just really starts to add that realism. Say, Scott, do you take a walk? Not so much. I mean, not really a loss when I'm doing these. If I was taking a loss on them, like, really, I wouldn't do them. Because if I don't sell it here, I'll, I'll end up doing something with it. And maybe I'll add more to it and, you know, make it available as a, like a, Super limited edition. Um, it's not a loss. I'm doing the feed anyway because I want to do the feed, and there's a lot of other parameters that you know will will bring other monies in and things like that. So not a loss. You know, it depends on the painting. Like so, like this one. I don't, you know, I put maybe a couple hours in. Ahead. I probably put like two and a half hours ahead of time into this. Um, so if I sell it for two fifty, three hundred, I'm still making fifty bucks an hour to hang out with you guys and do a feed. And in the ones where I offer up the vectors and things like that, those will pay dividend over time. Hopefully.
sometimes it's, you know, it's Thank not you like. Steve. Thank you, sir. You know, it's not making, you know, you know, ridiculous money, but it's not Walmart money either. And with the thing growing, we'll start bringing in some some actual you know, paid sponsors and things like that. That's gonna happen down the road, and you know, with that, it may, means the feed I can spend more time on and make it even better and better, because um, there's less you know I can get paid for the time it takes to set these up. This one wasn't too bad. I think actually one of the longest ones. That, that didn't do well, I still have the original, is the pirate one. The pirate one I thought was going to be a big, big, big one, and it didn't get really enough bids to sell it. And uh, it hasn't been huge online. It's been good. Dark skull, uh, stay with the red background. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this red background. I'm gonna fade it out more. Um, I'll have to see where it ends up. This camera up a little bit and see. I don't know the Walmart's up here are paying twenty four dollars an hour now. Legit? Some of them are, yeah. Good. Yep. Makes you want to go say, "Hey, welcome to Walmart." Yeah, two seven five. Thank you, Gary. But this one I was actually super nervous about. Um, I wasn't sure if it was going to actually be able to get any get serious color work in. Actually, I want to use a little bit of this yellow ochre and just kind of warm up a little bit. Those whites. Uh, that's really good. It's cool, cool, cool. Yeah, maybe a little Mendez texture in there. There's already a little. There's already. There's, it's hard to see, but there's already quite a bit of texture. You know. Uh, in there, see all the. It's a lot darker in person. And oh, pro tip: if you do have one of these, what I do is I just have that 3M or just you know magnet tape on the back, so that way they just the panels don't move. Makes it a lot easier. Blue, you out? Thanks, Blue. Have a good one. Uh, where are we at now? What do I want to do? I want to get some brown into these horns. Oh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to get these eyes a lot lighter. Because that's where the yellow is going to be.
I'm going to bring out and kind of highlight some of these teeth before I start carving detail and putting some grunge. These are some pretty gnarly, dirty teeth, so. Actually, I probably could go back in with this. Lighten these up a little bit. I'm just bringing them back up to the foreground a little bit because I'm going to carve them back. But I try to do like the super bright highlights at the very end because they're so bright you got to cut back in. I kind of try to do them a little bit around the midpoint. Yeah. Actually, one of them is up in the middle of Maine paying that and. I mean, that's like making 35, 40 down here. I mean, it's third shift stock. Yeah, but. I wouldn't be complaining. You know, so the big key is not going in for those like kill shots of bright white and hard black right off the right out of the gate because that's what that's what gets you. Those are really it really just backs you to a corner. Um, I've never buffed on this, so I don't know, but it would because this is you, I don't have it bolted now, but you can bolt this track down. Uh, so essentially you could do it, but I don't buff up here in the studio. I do that on the shop. Um, so you could. It would probably be really good actually. So I got you. Now, I want to take that brown. And what I'm first do is I want to get this bright yellow. Nah, I never use gel pens. Um, I do have some paint pens that I'll use for certain things like signing my name or certain things like that. But gel pens, A, don't clear well. Um, to clear, some, you can sometimes attack it. And that is not fun. Eyes uh, really yellow, and then the orange will come back in. But how much does it cost living up there? No, actually, you know, here it's really you know here it's fairly expensive. Up in the middle of Maine, it costs nothing. Very little to live up there. Orange here on the eyes. Cool. All right, now let me get some brown going. Yeah, I, like I said, I'll use certain like paint pens and, and paint markers. Like I'm a big fan of these. So these are Posca. Um, these are true paint pens. So they draw amazing. They cover great. And they hold up to wiping, clearing, polishing, anything like that. They're super, they're really, really awesome. Yes, this is from Star Wars. I'm big in the Skyrim too. I used to play the hell out of that. I want Elden Ring now a little bit and 
Fallout. How far have you been in Vietnam? Nah, not too far in Elden Ring. You die instantly. Well, that game, you pretty much just die. Over and over. Over and over My again. My friend just say, was saying, um, Halo was saying, like, oh, I'm, I think I'm going to start playing Elden Ring. And I'm like, be prepared to die a lot. He's like, no, I'll be fine. I'm like, oh, no, you just died left like, and right. You're going to die. Yep. So we get some brown, so we'll get up here and do some brown detail work. So what I'm using for brown, I just basically took some illustration burnt umber, thinned it out pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah, the whole forge thing. Uh, do a little. Oh, Gerald Mendez texture effects in here and just get a little staining in there. And we'll start bringing this puppy home. You know, I never did the Dark Souls games. Um, so, yeah. So it's a little different. You know, then like Skyrim and things like that, but it's got a lot of similarities. But I dig it. But then I grabbed a, then I got a PlayStation Five, and because I got Elden Rings on my Xbox, um, and then I got a PS Five, so I've been playing that. really getting that detail on the horns yeah I found some good ones on that as well on YouTube for for that I like the combat system it works cool problem is I have too many games my wife calls me after catch them because I have to catch them all, so I just buy whatever comes out. And then barely ever get a chance to play most of it because I'm working. But I make some time. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I spent two and a half years with Skyrim. I'm not touching until a newer version comes out. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was a problem, too. I, I did it mainly on my 360. Um, and then, you know, I got the Xbox One at the time, and then they, it was a different Skyrim, you had to start over, and none of your saves went over, and I just said, I'm done, because I wasn't building all that stuff again. So I haven't played Skyrim. Since then, really. Uh, what was my guy in Skyrim's name? I did an awesome, funny Storm name. Stormageddon. No, Stormageddon. Or that's no, Fallout. Stormageddon is Fallout. Oh, so yeah. if you come across Stormageddon and Fallout, that's me. Um, and if you know where the name Stormageddon comes from, you definitely get bonus points. I can't think. Okay. You don't know where it comes from, but. No, no, I'm talking about your Skyrim character. Oh, it was like Fjurgensen. It was. It was Fjurgensen. Like, yeah, something Fjord Fjurgensen or something like that. I came up with a like, weird Nordic name. Now I'm going to turn it on and find out. Does anyone know where the name Stormageddon came from? Where I came up with that? No, That's a deep cut. The if, if, name was Mortimus. Hmm. More than this. That's a good one. I love Skyrim, but I'm so bad at it. <laughs> yeah, 
So I'm gonna actually this um, burnt umber over some of the areas is adding a little nice tint to things as well. No, uh, there might have been something called Stormageddon, but it's a name from a very specific place. Not from a movie. Oh, I, there was a character know. named Stormageddon. You told me where it was from. Why? I showed you the video of where it came from. You did? Yeah. No, but it's a deep sci-fi cut. Like, super deep. It is from Doctor Who. <laughs> Joke. It does come from Doctor Who, but no clue what season. It's only said one. It's only said. I think it's only said once or twice in the whole series. Is it actually a character name, or is it just like an event? No, it's a it's a it's a character. Please tell me it was from Doctor Who. Yeah, well, like it was from Doctor Who, and it's. One character was called himself Stormageddon, the uh, the Devourer of Souls, or something. I forget what it was. You should. You should. I, I'll tell you. Hold on. I'm gonna go off mic for a second. Sorry. <laughs> Alfie Owens, the 11th Doctor who claimed to be able to speak to babies. Alfie Owens, Warlock, good one. Did you look it up or did you know it? Dark Lord of All. Dark, dark, <laughs> dark Lord of All, Stormageddon. It was, and the dad was James Corden, um, which he did a role in Doctor Who for that. Stormageddon's dad. That would have been a good question sometime for like a giveaway. I'm going to have to get some, some deep cut sci-fi questions for like giveaways okay let's get some of this detailed dark in here get these teeth kind of gnarled in <laughs> yeah I am too except for this last season the writing was just like too painful I can't watch it Tried. Every time I try, I just can't. Storm again. Talk to babies would be a game changer. We taught Kaylee basic sign language. Mm -hmm, you know, baby sign language like you know, milk and hungry and all done, you know, more, done more. Telling you, dad. that was the best thing we did. Because she would usually tell us why she was freaking crying. Yeah, nine thirty. Not too bad. I'm getting towards the end. Talk to babies, you know, I'll work. some streaks in here like this emotion going on it's dark in the corner but oh I was trying to do a ADHD superpower of hyperfixation 
<laughs> I have that pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Super fixation, hyper focus, where you just tune out everything else, including your own needs. Yep. Like eating. There have been many days where I've forgotten to eat food. Same here. You know, drawing, reading, or playing with video games. Some final highlights. I'm actually very surprised how this has come along in an hour and a half. Shit, it's 2.30, better eat lunch. Shine Scusta, where are you out of? I forget. I think we've talked about we this before, but. It's a seven hour difference, so. Six hours from here. It's 9.30, so we could probably a little bit further out than Hawaii. Yeah. Australia? No, Australia is like a full day. But... Not quite, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right, where is... Put some highlights in. Get that eye nice and bright. It's 12.35 p.m. in Sydney, Australia. British guy and just get it. 12.30 p.m. in Sydney. And that's lunchtime. Now,
bring it out. It's so funny the difference between the camera and this one because this is really more how it looks in person than the other one. It's currently 938 by the way. Thank you. And we're on the home stretch on this. Final highlight, final details. Before we go take any final bids, get this thing wrapped up. I think what I'm going to do this is the heavy black. I'll we'll hit some of this. So this is almost a pure illustration black and I'm just going to hit some of the super dark areas and really push them back and some of this dark makeup. Oh, you got up to 300 subscribers on the TV Guide one? That's awesome. That's really handy, man. I appreciate you doing that work. Thanks, man. I, um, where are we at for bids, Kaylee? Oh, we just got 300. Oh, blended paints in. Cool. Thank you, sir, for that. edge going here. There we go. I'm going to bring some light on that edge. And I want to bring some light. I think that was bid. What's that? I hope that was a bid. London, was that a London paint? Was that a bid or was that talking about the um, subscribers? Just want to clarify. Carl Becker just put 275. I think that's the current bid unless that's what you were. That was already a bid, so... 275 was already a bid, so. London Pay can clarify if that was an actual bid or if he was referring to the 300 subscribers on the other page. But I think he was. Oh, he said yes. Cool. That's a bid.
<laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, the TV guide is a Facebook group. Yeah. So, it really helps. <clears throat> now I gotta start thinking about what I'm gonna pay next week. <laughs> So what's the minimum I need to draw out vectors for paint masking car? Um, yeah, Guyver's coming up soon, Simon. Yeah, I got to do that. Uh, this is actually giving me more confidence for that. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Minimum I need to draw out vector files. So as far as software-wise, you just need a basic vector software. I use Adobe, but you can get Inkscape and things like that. Thank you, Harry. That was appreciated. Oh, are you in your stream fine? My stream's fine. Okay, it says on here that the viewers may experience buffering. Oh, we're connected to the Wi-Fi. Just leave it right now. Don't move it. We made it this far. If the Wi-Fi dumps, it should just jump over. Look at your stream. Oh. What? It's, it's clipping a little bit. Okay. It's probably because of the storm. Oh, yeah. You can try to... You can dump the wireless. It should, it should be fine. Yeah, we do have a storm coming up in here, so if we drop out, yeah, we'll just leave it as the highest bidder at this point wins it if I drop. So, get your best ones in, because we are at the tail end of this now. Thank you, Warlock. Oh, Mark asked if you saw the Marvel thing. Moon Knight? Yeah. Moon Knight? Yeah, Moon Knight. Watched it. Moon Knight. It's yeah, Moon Knight. So cool. Done very well. Very happy with how they how they did it. Um, I was nerding out the entire time. Yeah. I love you. Egyptian mythology, so yeah. Kaylee's an Egyptian mythology nut. Um, mythology nut in general. Yeah. But I love Egyptian and Greek specifically. Yeah. So. Yeah. I liked it a lot. Yeah, they said it was going to be a very different show. It's 
from what I gathered, not getting tied in to the main MCU or... Supposedly. It's gonna be... It might be, but some weird way. Oh yeah, this will get clear coated, wet sanded, polished, and and all done up. And I, you know, as you know, Gary can tell. <coughs> um, he's gonna watch the video. Gary's got a few paintings coming. You know, Gary knows I put I put some extra work into these after I'm done. You know, off camera and just you know, little add little details and little little things just to make it kind of perf more perfect. You know, you usually add like another like half an hour or 40 minutes of airbrush work after the fact. Just to make it. Thank you, Harry. Yeah, those little highlight ridges really just make it look cool. No, 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 2K, 2K clear. So I usually, typically, I almost, a lot of times I do double rounds. This one I probably won't need it, but it's got a heavy texture, so I might, I usually put three or four coats clear on it, uh, sand it back, and put another two coats on it, and then buff that is typically what I do. And that's why a lot of the clearing takes so long, because what I do is I kind of wait till I got a batch of them, or, you know, if I'm clearing a bike at the same time, I'll clear all those panels at the same time. So I'm not doing, like, a separate session just for just for the panel itself because it's about an hour shine thank you sir like on the leprechaun one which that's going to Gary um, that one I'm adding the gold tooth in and you know little details like that and that's gonna just make it you know, you know obviously I couldn't do that on camera and wait for sizing to go so there's always a little extra thrown in here but yeah I'm taking the way this is looking overall I said I was a little nervous painting this guy live. I've been wanting to do one for a while. He's a little drool, I think. Just, just a little. I'll probably I might take a little red candy in some spots and just tone some stuff or a little bit. I want to get a little bit orangey in here, I think. It just needs it a little bit. You know, afterwards, just reach out afterwards, and and uh, we'll settle up things and addresses and all that fun stuff. Hello, William. Just catching the tail end. Just about wrapped up here. Final highlights. Yeah, storm's coming in, so we're going to wrap this up right about now. So right now, the high, highest bid is Shine Customs at 400 
If anyone wants to get in on that, yeah, type it in chat. Um, if anyone wants, put your best and final in after this, and that's going to be it. We're going to wrap this thing up. Oh yeah, yeah, Simon, that'd be really cool. So best and finals for everyone right now, and we're gonna cap this thing off before we cut the feed. We're going once. Slow down a little Final darks. Thanks, Simon. I'll take some pictures of it afterwards and post them up. Yeah, it's going to look nice all cleared up. Thanks, Mark. You win, sir. Gonna close off the bids. Shine Customs. And at 400. Thank you, sir. Message me afterwards, either on Facebook, Instagram, and figure out the, the rest. And I'm gonna keep plugging away a little bit. And we will call this thing. All this thing done. Uh, let's see here. I want to thank everyone for popping in to tonight's feed. We made it through the storm, and uh, I'm really happy with the way this came out. I didn't honestly. My original plan was going to be just to do a monochromatic red, and but being able to get this much detail in two hour period um, was great. So to kind of go over what I did. This was a uh, red auto board Createx sealer. And they did a little texturing on the edge. And then I used some of the newer colors, that new uh, Berlin. This color is awesome. If you're on a red or just want to play with this Berlin Airbrush Bordeaux, this color is awesome. So definitely uh, check out that one. And the, um, the Titan buff. These two made this so much easier uh, to pull off in this time frame and I'm really happy with it. Uh, thank you to Shine for the bid and I'll uh, get this thing cleared up and we will end this now. We will see you guys next week. Thanks for checking it out. Have a great, happy, safe week. Thanks everyone. See ya.